taxes, keeping my books straight, running a profit and loss statement, it all gets so confusing. I used to spend more time trying to worry about my taxes and if I'm doing them right than I actually did working on my business. I needed a solution. That is when I found Core Financial. Core is a team of tax professionals that actually care about real relationships with their clients. From the moment I hired Core, I was able to trust that I would be fully taken care of. They run my books, keep me up to date with my finances, and make sure I'm taking full advantage of all the tax breaks I qualify for. Are you struggling to understand your finances? Do you need help making sure you don't make any mistakes? Look no further. Core Financial. Both Nick and I are huge fans of Core Financial, and we know you will be too. Check out howtofilmweddings.com slash core to see what they can do for you. Core Financial. Real relationships. No surprises. Uh, so what, what we do is not for everybody. Mm -hmm. So we attract the clients that feel comfortable with what we're doing. But then again, creativity means doing new things, or being creative means doing new things. Hello and welcome to the How to Film Weddings podcast. My name is Nick Miller and I'm joined by my friend, my best good buddy, Mr. John Bunn. John, how are you doing today? I am doing great. Uh, last week, it was amazing. Our course yes. was out. It's over. You can't get it anymore. Uh, to those of you who purchased it, thank you so much. Such a great thank response. You. Like we're so pumped about that content and already getting so many messages from so many of you. We will be opening that back up sooner or later. We're just not quite sure yet. Super exciting things, but something I'm really excited about and always excited about whenever we're on the podcast is our guest for today. And Nick, Yes. we had what we would consider a wedding celebrity on today. Oh, we definitely did. We had Remy Shouten of Maru Films on today. If you don't know Maru Films, like I don't, I, I don't know what you're doing wrong with your life, but you need to remedy that because you are getting ready to be blown away. Uh, we talked to Remy for an hour just about um, his journey into filmmaking and uh, storytelling and how he does so much destination work and how he got started doing it. it basically for free, and, but all the hard work that he put into it and how it is so much paid off. So uh, I'm really excited about this episode. I know our listeners are. So let's go ahead and jump in to this week's episode of the How to Film Weddings podcast. Remy Shouten of Maru Films, thank you so much for coming on the podcast today. How are you doing? I'm doing good. So how are you guys doing? We are doing great. really good. We're really talking good. to a celebrity. I mean, come on. We're excited. No, 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 no. <laughs> oh, Nothing yeah. like that. Nothing like that. Yeah, for sure. So um, for for people that might not know who you are, haven't heard of you because you are, you know, across the pond, as we Americans like to say, um, yeah. why, why don't you just kind of share a little bit about you, uh, your business and, you know, kind of how you got started in the in the wedding world? OK, yeah. First of all, it's very cool to be here, to be on the podcast. I've seen quite a few and I really like what you guys are doing. Um, having said that. Uh, about about us. Um, so I do borrow films together with my wife. So I uh, have been with my wife already for 15 years. So we're, we've been together for a very long time. She really doesn't like to be in front of the camera or do conferences and talks like this. So she usually tells me, okay, you go do it. So whenever I talk about Maru films, it's about me and my wife. Okay. Um, so how we got started with filming in, uh, in 2008, a long time ago, we actually went on holidays to Japan uh, and I actually just bought a camcorder. She had like a normal uh, photography camera and she was just taking pictures, like holiday pictures. And I was just walking around shooting stuff with my camcorder for like a full two weeks and we came back with 150 gigabytes of data like back then it was you know quite a lot like we yeah. shot a lot and we started editing that um and then it, it, that's actually the sort of the spark where it started with like video creation um 
uh, although I did have like a, a very creative uh, education, but it was very broad. Uh, I was doing design stuff, web design stuff uh, at that point, but mm -hmm. you know, video was an extension of being creative. Uh, and gradually we went on holidays again, started to filming more stuff. We got into filming car events uh, nice. because <laughs> <laughs> because I'm a little bit of a car nut myself. So uh, at some point we, in 2010, we moved to Japan. We lived in Japan for 10 months. And wow. at that point, it also really took off. It, it took more serious roots because... Um, I found I found someone there that was running a big blog called Speed Hunters, which is something from uh, electronic arts to promote uh, Need for Speed back then. Mm -hmm. I got in contact with him and then he saw my camcorder stuff and he was like, oh, that's pretty, pretty nice. Uh, and he said, oh, you should come to this event. Went to that event, recorded something uh, with the camcorder. <coughs> uh, edited it in three days, sent it to him. And he said like, okay, this is really cool. Can we put it on the blog? I said, okay, cool. Uh, a few days later, he had 200,000 views. Oh, wow. Uh, and then he said, okay, why don't you come to the next event? And at some point we got uh, some car companies like contacting him and say like, oh, can we do like a cool project with him? Uh, and so it, it got uh, snowballing, but at some point we also had to go back home uh, to the Netherlands. Uh, and uh, back home, I, I still did some car events, but it wasn't like uh, as cool as it was, you know, back in Japan. In Japan, they do everything, you know, a lot nicer, I guess. <laughs> um, and then uh, friends of us got married and they asked us to film their wedding. And that was in 2012. So, and here we are now. <laughs> the rest is history. And your films are borderline good. So, I mean, that's good. No. <laughs> <laughs> Kidding. They're amazing. I was watching right before we hit record and I was like, Nick, you've got to see this part on this one and this part. On and they are unreal how good they are. And Definitely. so it's, it's cool to think no. from 2012 till now. So that was what I guess eight years ago now. Yeah. About how many weddings ago. have you shot at this point? Uh, I think we're around. I, I didn't even count to be honest. Yeah. Around between 150 and 200, okay. I guess. So you've done a couple. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, but but not like I, I heard from some people that they do like 50 or 60 per year. We 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 never went that direction. Yeah. So. And do you do solely weddings now or do you do, you still doing some of the car stuff or are you still doing like other production? No, the, you were, the car stuff, we're not doing that anymore. Uh, but so in 2000, in 2010, uh, yeah, end of 2010, I came back 2011. I started uh, another company called Fresh U, which is a creative agency, which I had for quite a few years, which I was actually running to get uh, next to like Morrow Films in the beginning. And I did a lot of commercial stuff, like commercial work, but also like a lot of branding, web design, web development, uh, thinking of, you know, uh, marketing concepts and things like that. Mm -hmm. But at the same time, we also sh shot uh, like commercial stuff, like TV commercials, uh, and things like that. But honestly, at some point, uh, after I sort of my company merged with another company, and uh, I was sort of fed up with the whole commercial industry, like how it worked, how not satisfying it was, mm -hmm. you know, in the end, you deliver something really where you put your soul in, and then they're like, okay, you know, let's see how this performs. Let's see yeah. how this does and does mm -hmm. and you know, a week later, it doesn't it doesn't matter anymore, or the month later, it doesn't matter so yeah. much anymore. Uh, and because at the same time we were doing weddings, and you know, you got this great feedback from the couples where they were really happy, they were really enjoying uh, what you create. And you know, at that point, we also got a better understanding, like what a wedding film really means. Mm -hmm. You know what 
uh, what it means not only like the moment you deliver it, mm -hmm. but what happens like one year after. Maybe they get kids uh, mm -hmm. five years after, ten years, you know, and even twenty years from now. And if you think about it, this wedding film will outlive. Oh yeah, like. <laughs> lives you know generations yeah. at some point so what we're creating and what we're doing is something really important and so to answer your question very long answer to your I question i love this answer i'm enjoying it <laughs> yeah <laughs> is uh n i don't do a lot of commercial stuff uh because i get a lot of satisfaction out uh, of creating wedding films mm -hmm. and yeah. giving something to to the couples although no if i would want to i could probably you know do the commercial stuff but it's it's not at this point of my life that i feel like okay i should do that again yeah. or you know yeah that's good um so 2012 you start doing weddings we always love to kind of ask our guests um what that looked like kind of on a practical side what you charged and then kind of you know, what, what you're comfortable communicating about where you're at today, what you're charging. So what's kind of the story there? Uh, so when we started out, we the first year we actually did uh, four weddings in 2012. And they were, two of them were for friends. One of them was for a close colleague of uh, Puyok, uh, my wife. And uh, another one for another colleague. So the first three, we actually charge nothing. Mm -hmm. uh, they they gave they gave us some money in the end, you know, to as an appreciation. And then the second, uh, the 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 last one of the year, uh, the fourth one, we charged three hundred euros to record the ceremony. Okay. Uh, and then, so <laughs> basically, the average on in that <laughs> year was what 75 euros that we big officially time. charge yeah, big per, time. per wedding <laughs> <laughs> but yeah. you know it, the first one was so stressful and you know it was for a friend it, sure. and, and in a way it was also fun you know to do mm -hmm. so yeah we didn't really charge yep and then the second year we started to charge around 800 euros per wedding yeah and so you know as you you progressed i know that you're your home is in the Netherlands. You know, we've talked a little bit about like the market there and kind of some things that you've done to, um, you know, be able to support your family. Um, what, uh, before I guess I get to that though, like, what does it kind of look like, um, today? What kinds of packages are you offering? I know you're traveling the world. Your films are winning awards. You're winning best, you know, wedding filmmaker, you're doing different, you know, all these different accolades and awards. So what does it look like today, 2020? How many weddings are you trying to shoot? Um, kind of ballpark range for that. What would you say? Um, so we, I, so I aim or we aim to sort of shoot around 15 weddings per year. Uh, okay. Even less would be also, also nice. But I think 15, 15 is a good number uh maybe up to 20 so between 15 and 20 is, is okay yeah. um, but uh so that's the answer to the question right <laughs> yeah um basically yeah 15 to 20 weddings you're trying to yeah. are you and you're doing a lot of travel with those are you kind of yeah, so, where, where are they mainly located? Yeah. So honestly, the local market that we're we're serving right now, if if we look at you know how good the people are here, I mean there are a lot of talented people here, and but they like that they charge, I think on average between three thousand to like three and a half thousand, like the top end, yeah, uh, per wedding, and then you get like everything. So there's the whole package with everything on it, um, which you know. Then if you if you only want to do 15 weddings, it's hard to st sustain sure. mm. a, sure. a, a a living. So we 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 tend to have to do like the destination weddings where people are uh, actually flying into Europe and then uh, shoot that, or we fly to other other places of the world. Right. Uh, a, a lot of our clients are from the U.S. or from 
Asia or from different parts of, of the world, uh, I, I think about like at least 80% of our clients are from outside of Europe. Oh. Okay, wow. Um, we do get a lot of inquiries, you know, in, in, inside of Europe, but it usually doesn't work out with the with our packages or the pricing and their budgets and things like that. So, yeah. yeah. So 80 yeah. or so percent there. And then I guess, you know, like when we were talking beforehand, you said that you have been sending out some um, quotes and different packages for up to, I, I believe you said 40,000 was a, a recent quote that you sent. And so like going from True. zero, you know, from free to that, that is really inspiring, you know, to like be able to charge or even quote that much for certain weddings. So that's really cool. And there's a lot of people that are listening that are from, you know, certain parts of Europe that I know they're like, Hey, my market isn't sustaining me here. And so one of the things in a little bit that we do want to talk about is getting out of your, you know, you might have to get out of your direct vicinity to be able to support your family the way you want to, or things like that. So that's yeah. such an inspiring story for sure. Yeah, well, well honestly, I, w I would love to, you know, charge the same amount and then shoot in our local local area because then I don't have to travel so much and I don't have to, you know, be away from the kids so much. You know, yeah. I love to travel as well, but it's always trying to find a balance there. Yeah. Um, and so your first point, yeah, we, we did send out some like really crazy quotes, uh, but they were also like crazy weddings where you have like a five day wedding uh with where they want four shooters and things like that uh and this one was uh, specifically was one in 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 new zealand that uh, from a celebrity from uh china <clears throat> I, I can't say too much about it because sure. i have the N NDA. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh but uh so so I, I yeah obviously it needs to make sense financially because you have a lot of costs also yeah uh, and like five day shoot you know it, it adds up uh, and you know, and in in the end, they they chose for someone who did it for free. Oh yeah. So <laughs> it's <laughs> like okay, <laughs> but I th I think you know what it is with this is um, first of all, you have to get the inquiries, uh, and then if you do get the inquiries, you always you also have to dare to charge. And the thing is with 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 getting the money you want first comes with charging the money you want or you think you're worth because if you if you don't charge it you will never get it yeah i've never i've never booked i've never booked a forty thousand euro wedding mm -hmm. i've sent out multiple quotes around for forty thousand, but nobody said yes but <laughs> maybe one one time they will say yes so that'd be awesome <laughs> exactly so if you but that's with you know asking it first and then you know trying to book it yeah well well something something with you saying that is you you know and understand your value and your time and you know all of that stuff and you've put a price on you know if i'm going to travel and you know shoot for five days and you know have to take up like this is what it's going to cost and while i'm sure that you're bummed that you know they haven't booked you for that amount, but you also know that you feel good about that. Cause that's, if, if I'm going to be gone for a week and, you know, travel halfway across the world or whatever, you know, this is what I need to make to do that, to make it worth my time. And I think that that's, that's just something that takes uh, a lot of us a while to know and understand mm -hmm. like what, what my value is and I can put a price on this and yeah, someone is probably going to do it cheaper. And you know, if they go that way, then you're like, okay, that that's fine, but I put it a value fine. on myself. Yeah, yeah, you put that, yeah. that. That's great. One thing that you said a little bit ago, as you were talking about kind of commercial work, and then um, how you know you had put your heart and soul into this, and then it really didn't matter. But whenever you came over to weddings, you know there was something that was lasting. There was something that you know that that the couples could you know watch in a few years or whatever. And I think. Um, something that that you've really tapped into is we've watched some of your films that are 
absolutely incredible is you know your ability to uh, tell a story in your films and and the importance of pulling out a good story so that it's you know you're you're watching a wedding video but you're watching something so much more than that so why don't you maybe just talk a little bit about you know storytelling and and you know the importance of a good story and maybe even what that really is or what you're thinking about as you're approaching that yeah I, I think I think what we what, what I really want to touch on first is you know the importance of a good story i mm -hmm. think i've had discussions with people like uh, they, uh, about like wedding films like they, they say okay it's not important to have a good story you know it's about their day and you're documenting that mm -hmm. it's totally true you are documenting it but i think that if it is a document that has to last for a very long time and if we look back at uh, at cinema, for example, the, the movies that last f forever or a very long time, they are the ones with an impeccable story. Mm -hmm. Not necessarily the best cinematography, not necessarily mm -hmm. the best color grading, not necessarily uh, the best music. And obviously, it all helps when it all comes sure, together. Sure. But I mean, story is the most important thing that makes something timeless. Mm -hmm. Uh, and with having said, you know, how important I feel that wedding films are and that it's a, a, an important historical document that we give to these couples, we also have to look and think about the timelessness of the productions that we make. Um, and I think with good story, you have a good foundation on uh, creating something that is timeless. Mm -hmm. That will resonate with, you know, with the people 20 years down the line in the same way that it does now. So, yeah. um, so that's why I think that, you know, story, story is important. Uh, and I think, I think with weddings, it, it's hard, it's hard to tell a good story because good storytelling is about not giving away all the information right away and, you know, um, creating uh, this suspense or this like uh, right. story that you have this story curve where, you know, you begin somewhere with a story and you go slowly to a climax and you have a resolution, uh, but you also have a conflict somewhere, you know? Mm -hmm. And I think a lot of people are like, okay, a conflict, but uh, there is no conflict at, uh, at, um, at a wedding unless you know there's conflict between the mother and, and the bride but it's not about that it's mm -hmm. not about that it's about sort of figuring out how you can get someone from the beginning of the story until the end i i, I always try to measure like the how good a wedding film is if uh like how many strangers are going to watch the wedding film till the end mm-hmm mm -hmm. I mean, if, if, if people do that, if people want to watch your whole wedding film from beginning to end, it means that you did something in the beginning that was interesting enough for them to watch until the end. Uh, and I think with uh, this is a good measure to sort of figure out like, okay, is, is, do I create a good story which is uh, interesting for everybody? And the reason why I think that's important is because, you know, 20 years down the line, maybe they have new friends, they have uh, different people around them or their kids, you know, they're, they're growing up. Maybe they didn't see the wedding film or they, maybe they see it after 20 years, you know, and then being able to tell like an interesting story about, you know, their parents. I mean, how, how cool is that? Yeah, 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 definitely. So as you're, you know, what are maybe as you're talking about good story, do you have like some stuff in mind that you're always thinking whenever you sit down to an edit? Because, you know, if 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 we want to get them to the end, you know, we need to make that first, you know, you know, in a five minute video. You need that first 30 seconds to be really like really draw them in. You know, are there are there certain yeah, things exactly. that you are? Are there certain things that you are thinking as you approach to really try and draw people in? Or is it, um, you know, just kind of go i guess go with the flow with each wedding or does that make sense yeah it makes sense so I, I i think you know what we do with uh with wedding films is before we even really start the edit is we we really think like okay 
what is an interesting beginning and how can we start with something? How can we build their characters? How can we sort of uh, walk someone through the progression of the day, but also mm -hmm. like from a feeling point of view? I think with a lot of things, you know, there's, there's, there's certain moods during a, a wedding day that you have to sort of put in as well. And uh, like, if you look at the wedding day, there's always some sort of, uh, uh, like a, a, a suspense uh, mm -hmm. curve going on, you know, before the ceremony, there's more suspense, they're like nervous, you know, uh, and then going towards the ceremony and then the ceremony is usually like a high point where mm -hmm. sort of they release the suspense after they said yes and they walk down the aisle, you know, uh, and then usually a lot after that is sort of more happy and elated because, you know, the, the tension is gone. Um, so we really try to figure out like, okay, how, how are we going to build this story? How are we going to pe put these different emotions into the film? How can we take someone through the emotions that they feel, like the couple feels on the day? Mm -hmm. uh, and then with a little, like I, I call it the hook in the beginning. Yeah, yeah. But, and. I think, like, if you, if you look at like what what you, good YouTube videos do, for example, just a, whatever doesn't even matter which topic, you know, a good YouTube video has a good hook in the beginning. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. If you don't, you're just like, okay, uh, boring, skip, 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 skip. Okay, I'll go to the next one, you know. Mm -hmm. So the beginning is important of a of a film that it's sort of drawing you in. Do you remember that wedding from a month ago? <laughs> yeah, like that one that you needed to start editing yesterday? But you also need to prep today for your wedding tomorrow and you're leaving for your first vacation in forever on Monday. So what do you do? It seems that the only creative part of your edits are the excuses you're going to have to give your clients. We have the solution, Weditor. Weditor is a team of top wedding editors, project managers, and account coordinators that help us wedding filmmakers edit. They match the right editors with your style so you can spend your time where it matters most, on your business. Nick and I both use Weditor and we don't know how we would run our companies without them. It takes a team to build an amazing business and you shouldn't try to do it all on your own. Head over to howtofilmweddings.com slash Weditor to help you free up your time so that you can focus on growing your brand. Be sure to use promo code HTFW for $50 off your first project. Weditor, more than freelance, more than outsourcing. How do you deliver your wedding films? Dropbox? Disc? A subscription service that is way too expensive? We have the answer for you, Wedflow. Wedflow is a cloud-based digital delivery system that we love. I personally have been using Webflow for months and I can't get over how great of a service it is. First off, Webflow is pay per project. That's right, you only pay for the data that you need. Webflow uses a premium viewing experience accessible on all modern devices and playback up to 4K. With custom branding and theming, wedding filmmakers can deliver an experience that's truly on brand from start to finish. Head to howtofilmweddings.com slash Wedflow and upload your first project for as little as $1 per gigabyte. Wedflow, a whole new take on wedding film delivery. Yeah, yeah, I loved that. The one, what, I, what was the name of that? Was it Harrison? Is that who it was the one that we were watching, John? You know, uh, where you Huntington. start with um, Huntington. Um, oh, yeah. Yeah, where, where you start, you know, with just the ocean and the loud ocean waves and the sounds. And I know that, and then some voiceover stuff. But I thought that was, I mean, it was scenery and stuff, but just with all the sound and how it looked and all of it, you know, really, really pulled me in, you know, and I wanted to keep watching, you know, just from hearing all the stuff that was going on. So um, you, uh, you do, it's, you it's do a great job with that. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. Yeah. It, it was, uh, it's honestly also uh, one of our favorites as well. Um, but the interesting thing is like the sound that we put in the beginning is because the, the, the bride, Marissa said to us, like, I love this sound, you know, in the morning. This is why I love LA mm. as well, or living in LA because I can go, to the beach and uh, and hear the sound of the pebbles, you know, yeah. uh, 
uh, being dragged in with 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 the uh, with the water. So that's why we also said, okay, you know, this is important. This is like really something for the couple. So we'll use mm -hmm. that to to tell to tell their story. Um, and and I think the one with Marissa and Huntington has you know it has a very surprising and emotional ending. Uh, where you sort of don't expect it, but once you, if you have taken the time to watch the whole thing, then you know, it's, yeah, I, sort of what we measure our, our films with is like to see if we get goosebumps. You know, <laughs> if we don't get goosebumps, then it, we we still need work, yeah, to do. So, uh, yeah, yeah, and I think that like when you start talking about you know these stories and you know what you're thinking about when you're putting it all together you know no two couple is this like they're not they're not the same no two couples right. and so like really being a good listener whenever you, if you don't have time to meet with them before the wedding but like even on the day just like paying attention to the mood of the day and the couple themselves and what they're like with each other and if they're you know really close and romantic and you know you can pull from that feel to you know create conflict like there's there is, you know, with audio, you, you could start, you know, your film with like audio conflict, which is feel you feel like conflict in your bones because the audio is noisy and messy. And you're like, what is good? But like there's all different kinds of ways with different mm -hmm. couples. And so there aren't just templates to say, oh, I'm going to make the film like this every time and I'm going to have the kiss happen. And that be the, the, the climax of every one of my films. And I'm going to end it with a shot of the couple. And so like I think a lot of filmmakers try to get this into a, a template and especially if you're shooting way too many films you know it's it's really quite impossible to get into that zone with you know 50 60 70 weddings if you're trying to crank them out in, in a hurry so I guess my my next question for you about the editing is like do you like do you usually spend a long time on all of your edits are you the one that's editing or is it your wife or how how does that work the process like um for your edits yeah okay so with the edits we do spend a lot of time on the edits uh it, it can sometimes it goes up to three weeks or something mm -hmm. of, of editing which is like extreme cases but um we tend to sort of like deviate between the editing so i do one she does one uh gotcha. Mm -hmm. And then we sometimes do have help with some with, with some weddings where we have an external editing party who helps us with sort of organizing the project, so we can really focus on uh, the sense. creativity. Mm -hmm. uh, and then, uh, so we, yeah, and then we, a lot of the times we go back and forth. So uh, the funny thing is, like, I'm more of like the aesthetics, and I like the pretty stuff. I like to make the intros and the outros and. Uh, and my wife really likes to do like the emotional stuff and really putting the feeling in mm. and the more meaningful stuff. So we sort of balance each other That's out awesome. where I sort of try to focus a little bit more on the aesthetics and she focuses more on <clears throat> the emotional part or the feelings. Yeah. And, yeah things like that. So, yeah. Well, if, if the listeners out there haven't had a chance to check it out, we'll obviously link to your website and stuff to the few that might be out there that haven't listened. You know, you're, you're definitely one of those crews, of, especially people here in the U.S. are like, oh, my goodness, like we look to them for inspiration. And so it's cool mm -hmm. to kind of hear your journey. Um, I did want to try like transition a little bit into you said this was this wedding was in Los Angeles. You're obviously in, you know, the Netherlands. You're like a little bit away. You know, you're kind of far away. <laughs> um, so you're doing a lot of traveling and. I just wanted to kind of talk about destination weddings. You said like 80 percent of them. Uh, of your weddings or more are destinations. Um, How do you get into destinations? Is yeah. this like on purpose? Did you, you know, what kind of set the stage for you? Um, was there a big break or a wedding that was a big destination that got you going? Um, what's the story there? So about the destination weddings. So the first destination wedding we did was in 2015. It was a destination wedding in Iceland. Uh, mm. But we actually put a lot of work into getting a destination wedding. Uh, so where it all started out with was that um, I was together with my now wife, with Puyok, for 10 years. 
and uh, we went to this really fancy restaurant and I thought I told her like oh you know get dressed nicely and everything and uh, she said like okay cool yes nice okay and she dressed up nicely it was a really nice fancy restaurant and that was it but apparently she thought that you know I would propose to her there you know <laughs> it has been 10 it has been 10 years it has <laughs> been freaking 10 years <laughs> and uh, it didn't happen then but I gave her a gift to go on a trip to Iceland and I had the idea to propose her there but the funny thing was after that dinner she sort of gave up on the idea that we were getting married mm. which which I always say is like you know then it's the perfect time to ask someone to marry you because then she doesn't expect it anymore you know yeah yeah do the unexpected <laughs> um so that was in uh, in may in may and we went to a trip uh to iceland in october uh and i had uh this idea of how where to do it and everything and uh we were hiking up this up this really beautiful place and um it was like a two hour hike and we didn't see a lot of people. And then we got there and it was this beautiful place where, which looked down on this glacier. And then on the right, you could see like almost like an infinity amount of land uh, on, on the right side. It, it was really beautiful, breathtaking. Mm -hmm. And I took my, it, I took a tripod, I took a camera and everything. And the funny thing was I said, okay, let's take a, take a selfie. Um, and uh, she still had the apple in her hand and everything. And I told her like, okay, you know, you know put the apple down. And she's like, why? Well, I could just hold it on my back and everything. And I was fiddling around with the microphone and everything because I wanted to record the audio and stuff like that. And at some point she's like, what's, what's the microphone doing there? You know, and then I, I pop, I popped the question. Uh, and she was flabbergasted. She, she slapped my hand first and then put in she said yes eventually which was great and then we <laughs> which was great and then the rest of the trip we sort of continued uh, having fun and we were already filmmakers back then and we so we filmed a lot so when we got back home we thought like okay you know this is an, we we can make something out of this and send it to our friends sort of that we're in, engaged Mm -hmm. um, so we made a film out of it and at the very end you see me sort of going on my knee and you know popping the question and at that point I, I thought like okay you know this is this is an interesting story maybe it's something cool for wedding blogs uh, maybe it's some cool content that we could use to promote uh in a way that we can get destination weddings because you know we were in love with Iceland and we thought like oh yeah Iceland is so awesome and we want to go and shoot a wedding there so we created this blog post we put the film there we sent the, f the film to with like uh, uh, the blog post to a lot of Iceland blogs a lot of wedding blogs uh, tried to post it everywhere on uh, on Facebook and stuff like that really to get the views in mm -hmm many hours and a lot of work later uh, i think we hit about sixty thousand views on on on, on the video uh, and the actually the blog post we had about sixty thousand views on the blog post and the video and then uh in, at, at the bottom of the blog post we wrote a little something that we said like okay you know if you are planning a destination wedding yourself you know why don't you contact contact us so after that period, we actually had three inquiries for uh, a wedding nice. for weddings in in Iceland, uh, and there was one particular couple that we we felt so connected with, uh, but the downside was they didn't have any budget. Hmm. Uh, but they wrote these really amazing emails uh, with great story, and they were wedding photographers from from the U.S. You know, for, for you, us <laughs> Europeans, that's like, oh, the United States is like the wall, Valhalla of, uh, of, of weddings, you know? <laughs> um, and then, you know, we, we put a lot of time and effort into getting to know the couple. And we really already were thinking about, like, how can we make this wedding film? And also at that point of time, we had this workshop, this workshop 
from Valère, Tim Twynham. I don't, I don't, I don't know if people, a lot of people know them, but they were well, three, four years ago, they were really big and mm -hmm. really amazing. Uh, they're they're still amazing, but Tim sort of moved on. So Tim from Valère moved on to doing commercial stuff. So he's doing amazing commercial stuff. Um, and we went to his workshop and so, and th there were and it really helped us to really start to sort of open open up to to uh to ourselves you know to who we really wanted to be and we, it really made us think about like okay how are we going to create a wedding film that we feel we need to do uh so we also put a lot of thought into like okay what is a wedding film for us what is an ideal wedding film for for uh for you know from a creative point of view what do we mm -hmm. want to create also also because we didn't get paid for you know the the shooting the wedding although we could you know be there with all the guests and enjoy all the uh, all the things the guests were enjoying so we were really there as almost as guests also we did, but we didn't mm -hmm. know know that but it gave us sort of the creative freedom to create what we want. Mm -hmm. yeah. And we already started to do some, some pre-production about thinking about, okay, how are we going to do this? How uh, can we make this special, you know? And he had the, the so we knew that the, the groom was going to do, uh, run in the morning. And the bride, because he was a runner, and the bride was going to uh, do a horse riding and things like that. Mm -hmm. And we incorporated that into the story because we knew about that about them. And then we thought about how to do this shot, like this opening shot, uh, very wide. And you see the, the the very cinematic Icelandic background. So you see him running. And, and so we made this shot list of how we wanted to do it. So at the wedding, not everything happened the way we wanted it to happen, especially in Iceland. The the you know the weather is very unpredictable. But we did get the shot, you know, of him running. Uh, we didn't get the shots of them doing uh, the horseback riding because that was postponed until later. Uh, and after, and it was an amazing wedding. There were, and we were really treated like guests. And the father of the bride was, the other parents of the bride were so amazing. Uh, and it was really funny. So back home, we thought like, okay, how can we sort of make the most out of this? Because it's an investment. If you do a wedding for free, it's an investment. So we thought like okay let's let's see how we can create what we had in mind and how can we get the most out of it so we really with that film we really created something that was not there yet but it was something that because we we really looked into what we wanted to do mm -hmm. what we felt that good for us uh, and we didn't care about you know what other people were doing so once we dropped that film and it has this really it has this opening shot that i envisioned with you know going down and you see a runner like even that opening shot with someone running in in the beginning of a wedding film was already something that people said like okay what is this <laughs> what is this uh, what's going to happen so you sorry already have sort of like a story element that the hook that sort of pulls you in, you know, mm -hmm. uh, and and that film really got uh, we promoted that film to sh share it everywhere, and that really kickstarted our uh, our business. And I think we also started to approach weddings differently from that point because we really thought about like what, how are the wedding films. Uh, how do we like to do the wedding films, you know? Mm -hmm. uh, and <coughs> not looking at like what other people are doing. So uh, in the end, that, that film got a lot of attention, a lot of views. And I think we won our first award with that. And it really sort of set, uh, well, put us on the map. Uh, so, and then the year after, or the year that we released the film, we got two destination weddings, and then the year after we had like uh, eight, and then you know it it keep, it kept growing like growing like that. So, um, but but it was that one film where we really thought like found ourselves, I guess, that mm -hmm. sort of sparked and 
mm-hmm. um, because it was also different than yeah. what others had. I think a couple of things that stood out, I don't mean to cut you off, but I, that stand out to me is this is a film that you connected with the couple and you did this because you wanted to do it, not just for the money. Um, and yeah. you looked at it as an investment which is huge. Like you looked at it as a way, you know, it's like you look at the film, I think it's on your website. Um, the yeah. one that you're talking about and it's stunning. It's the one from Emily and O. Yeah. Yeah. And so yeah. that one, you know, it's, it's beautiful and stunning and it, you had this freedom because of it, you know, you were able to create yeah. what you wanted. And so like, that was the first thing that stood out to me is like, you've got to start somewhere. And if you're out there and you're listening you know, and you're like, I want to be where they are, or I want to head this direction, or a, whatever direction you want to do. There mm-hmm. are certain things that you have to do to invest in yourself, where maybe 36 months from now, you're going to be in the same position where Remy's at if you are doing these things. And then another thing that really stood out to me, and I think so many of us don't think about this, is you talked about sharing this with different blogs in Iceland. I, I know you're sharing your your story in Iceland, and and but like so many of us make a film, we put it on Vimeo or YouTube, we upload it and we kind of just like, okay, it's out there now. And like you expect it just to catch fire in the world to see it and it to blow up your brand. And um, But you went out and you actively probably, I would assume, spent hours upon hours sharing Long, this yeah, blog weeks, weeks. with hundreds and hundreds of blogs to have a few of them pick it up, have a little mm-hmm. line in your blog and then three of those, you know, and this is this spark that you needed in your business this little bit of you know kindling to the flame that like got it going and then what you did with that you took advantage of it by creating a masterpiece you know you had the skill that was there at that point and then it starts to take off i think so many times we get messages you know i know nick and i get messages they're like well how did you charge this much or how are you getting this and it's like there is a process that if you take your time and you really yeah work on your your craft mm-hmm. the the things that you want to be shooting and then distribution getting people's eyeballs to see your work that's the missing piece that so many people i think miss out on because if you wouldn't have shared those you know that information with those blogs if you wouldn't have done your due diligence to really think about how to market to the end consumer you would have never gotten picked up and now it's probably much easier you're getting contacted a lot more about these beautiful destinations that are all over your website and all over your Instagram and you know all these speaking and teaching and all this stuff mm-hmm. because you got that you got that fire going and that's the hardest part for so many of us is like I don't know how to have a big fire going it's like you got to start somewhere and you got to get that spark going and you've got to do that work and over time I mean however many years ago that was till now you'd look back and you say, oh my goodness, it's so much work. And that is why there aren't very many Maru films out there is because they, they don't, aren't willing to put in that work. So that's so inspiring. I, th- I think you said that well, you know, like if, if I always, when people ask me questions like, uh, I have this problem, how do I solve it? Uh, and I, I think like, if you just sit down and think about what your problem is and then make a plan on how to approach it and solve it, then, you know, you, you shouldn't even be asking the question. Obviously, you can ask the question, but like with some questions, I feel like you, you have to think self yourself first. You're, you're an entrepreneur. You're, you're someone, an entrepreneur solves problems, you know. If you see something that you want to reach, then you know that, uh, and it's an obstacle to get there. Then that's a problem that you have to solve. You have to think about like how can I do that, and don't expect it to happen within you know a very short period of time. It 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 takes a lot of time to get there. I mean, uh, and there are different ways to get there, but uh, you have to think about it for yourself also you know there's no secret recipe to Mm -hmm. success or getting somewhere you want to be it's a lot of hard work behind uh behind the the the, all the films or the business or so much the things that the Mm -hmm. things that you don't see i mean the people that i know that i talk with that you know that 
uh, do cool stuff, they, you know, they all work so much. They all really work so much. It, they are, like whenever I talk to them, they're working. It doesn't matter what time of the day they're working, <laughs> you know? Yeah. I mean, and, and, and that is what it takes to sort of be, uh, to take a business to a next level. Sure. It, it takes a lot of effort, you know? But it's also okay to not ha want to have to do that, you know? It's a, yeah, you have to find a balance as well. We know the time suck that is searching for the perfect song for your wedding film. Musicbed has spent years collaborating with artists, bands, and composers to make it easier than ever for anyone to find the right song for their video. With amazing artists like Chapters, Tony Anderson, and The Light, The Heat, Musicbed is the best place for wedding videographers to get licensed music. Their subscription service was a life changer for me, especially since all of their subscription music is pre-cleared for every social media platform Facebook, Instagram, Love Stories TV, and my personal favorite, YouTube, all pre-cleared. And if you are interested in a free month of a Musicbed wedding subscription, head over to howtofilmweddings.com slash musicbed. When you sign up, use the promo code HTFW and you will get your first month for free. Yeah, that's yeah. Good. Yeah. Lot, lot, lots of really good information. My, my wife and I, we've over the past few years, we've probably, you know, gone to, you know, 10 or so places across the United States. And our similar, our, our story is very similar when we wanted to do destination stuff, you know, we hooked up with love stories TV and we actually gave one away for free. And that just kind of started this snowball, this snowball effect of people yeah. finding us. And, um, you know, there's some people like you, you did that for free. No, you shouldn't do anything for free. And, while I do agree that if you're a destination videographer or photographer, you shouldn't do all of your work and not charge, you know, for travel. But as you're getting started and getting the ball rolling, like I see no, no problem with that so that you're showing the kind of stuff that you wanted to shoot. One thing as I'm transitioning now into our question of the day presented by Weditor, Weditor more than freelance, more than outsourcing. One thing that you were talking about, um, Remy, during the, uh, you know, your Iceland filmed is you're like, you know, we, we were able to be as kind of creative as we want because, you know, they weren't paying you and you can kind of do, do what you envision. But now as you've kind of moved past that and now yeah. that you're being more creative with your films and people are hiring you and paying you for that stuff, Josh Abbott or Jordan Abbott asked this question. Do you ever find it hard to sell couples on super creative edits or is that the type of clients that you've built your brand to attract? That's an interesting question. Um, I think it's a little bit of both, but yeah. um, so yes, we, we, I think, you know, attracting the right clients is about knowing what you show. Mm -hmm. And, you know, if they see the creative stuff that we do, it's not for everybody. We right. get all, we also have a lot of people that say like, oh, that's too dark or that's not a wedding film. I recently posted a film and someone and, and, and someone said like, oh, that's like, a, it's like a, a, the thriller sound, sound effect there in the beginning. And, you know, that's fine that someone, someone thinks that or feels that way, but, uh, and uh, I, I like to do it, you know, different. But there was a reasoning behind that mm -hmm, that mm -hmm. build up. There's a reasoning behind why we do it. Uh, so what what we do is not for everybody. Mm -hmm. So we attract the clients that feel comfortable with what we're doing. Yeah. But then again, creativity means doing new things, or being mm -hmm. creative means doing new things, and. You know, with new things and being creative, you have to sometimes do like a little bit like silly things or weird things to 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 do that. Um, and sometimes we do that, and al although we have reasoning for doing certain things, it's like sometimes the clients are like, mm, you know, that might be a little bit too much. Mm -hmm. uh, so I mean, that's the downside of being, I guess trying to be really creative with, mm -hmm. uh, with these kind of films. Um, yeah. So, I mean, there's a downside, but, but I, I, most clients are like, you know, they, once we deliver it, they're like very happy, but it happens yeah. also that they're like, okay, this is a little bit too much, which is fine. You know, yeah. and we can look into, we, sometimes we also know that we are pushing the limit. Mm -hmm. Sometimes we do that and, uh, then, you know, see what the clients think. 
Uh, and then if they say like, wait, tone it down, then, you know, obviously we will look into it and then toning it down. If we feel like, if we do feel like it's, it's something that we push the limit too much. Like if, if, if the feedback comes from like a different direction where we feel like, okay, this is not reasonable, then, you know, we, we charge for that. But mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah. No, I, th I thought, I think that's a really good, you know, whenever you brand yourself well and you brand yourself correctly, you are going to, um, attract, you know, those kind of people. You, you probably get way more people that are like, Oh, I love this. You know, I want something in this vein. You probably get the, those type of inquiries are way more overwhelming than the people that say, man, I love your work and I appreciate what you're doing, but can you do something a little, a little less, you know, you, pr you're probably still getting some, a little bit of that, but it's probably yeah, not near as much, not near as much as the other people that are saying, man, we love your work. It's so incredible. You're, you're doing a good job of attracting those, those kind of clients. Cause that's the kind of stuff that you want to create. So, yeah. um, yeah, but, but definitely. honestly, but honestly, it's also like what you said, like sometimes clients ask for something that you don't create mm. and then I'm also open for that, you know? Yeah. 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 Um, but I, but I, and then I was, I, I want to make it work because it's another creative challenge. Mm -hmm. So, and I think we sort of, what, what drives us is to be creative doing different things. And when a client says like, oh, can you do it in a different way? Or like, I'm like, okay, let's do it. Let's, let's try, let's try this and see how we can make it work. Mm -hmm. uh, so I'm, I'm very open to, you know, doing different things. Yeah. Yeah, awesome. that's great. That's great. So um, we are we are running um, short on time here, but we wanted to we wanted to give you a minute. Um, I, I know that you you mentioned earlier as you were kind of talking about your Iceland stuff, you know, some education that you had been to and kind of how that, you know, fueled, you know, some creativity in you. And I know that you're really big into the education space with, you know, workshops and that kind of stuff. So we just wanted to. Um, we, you know, we really believe in, in, in people should invest in themselves to get, you know, better in their business. So we wanted to give you a chance just to talk about, you know, some of the stuff that, um, you know, business wise that, that you are involved in workshop wise that, that are helping others, um, become better in their business. Yeah. Well, I, you know, I, I also, I have my own sort of experience with going to workshops and it really, really helping me. So. Mm -hmm. Um, I also feel like a way, you know, it's it's giving back and it's a different mm -hmm. kind of energy that you get from uh, teaching. Yeah. It's, it's really beautiful to see that whenever you share your, your, your story or you share whatever you're doing, that you can really help someone and that you can see them flourish and do great things themselves. And... I think I think with with a, a lot of the workshops that we would that we do is that we don't necessarily want to teach you exactly what we're doing, but we we want to open your mind to what a wedding film is, what it could be, and what it means to you. Um, with 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 a lot of the workshops that we do, we uh, there's like some. I, I find it interesting when someone says like, "Oh, I'm a little bit confused about." what to do with wedding films but i think in a way it's good because that makes them think afterwards like okay you are confused because you have this uh, mental uh, idea of what a wedding film should be and then whatever we're approaching or touching in the workshops sort of makes you think like okay but is that the right way to do it do mm -hmm. i have to do all the things that i have i have to do for the wedding films so we really try to open people's <clears throat> minds with the workshops we do to really help them to be unique because the reason that we were successful with that first destination wedding is because we were unique we were different mm -hmm. we, we did something else and the moment you start doing the same thing as other people or you're following whatever we're doing then you know, you're not unique. You don't stand out necessarily in that in that sense. So if you want to creatively stand out, then you have to do something new and different, which has not been done before. And the best way to do that then, you know, it's, it's about really finding, figuring out how to do it and stay close to yourself. Mm -hmm. Because then it's easy to do, you know? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, yeah, so yeah, that's what we really touch on uh, with with our workshops. Uh, and then we have we have like different different ones. We have the Kokoro, which is really A to Z, just 
uh, going through more theoretical one. Then we have the osmosis we do together with Ricardo, which is very, very practical. So we, we cover a little bit of theory, but then we want you to really do stuff. So you will, that you shoot with couples, you will edit and because, you know, everybody has a different level, different mm -hmm. level, and then it's good to sort of try and help them to that. And it's, it's, you know, education is important because yeah. you can buy a new camera, but you can have uh, the best camera, but it doesn't make you mm -hmm. necessarily a better shooter or a very st better storyteller. Exactly. I mean, so, or, or you, it doesn't make you work better with couples mm -hmm. or, you know, things like that. So, yeah, I think education is really important. Yeah, we totally agree. We totally agree with you on that one. So um, I as we're as we are finishing up on time, if people would like to, you know, learn more about your workshops or learn more about you guys, watch some of your films, where where can they do that? Uh, they can do that on our website. So morrowfilms.com slash en for the English side. We have to work with multi-language. <coughs> nice in Europe slash education. <laughs> Okay. So morrowfilms.com slash en slash education. And they have a couple of followers over on Instagram. Um, where, where would they find <laughs> you on Instagram? Uh, Maru Films. Yeah. yeah. Cool. And we'll, we'll link all that in the show notes. I mean, there's so much more that we could talk about and we'll definitely, you know, have you back on to talk about more things. Um, I really do think it's great to hear your story about how you've put so much into the beginning portion of your business and now you're able to reap the benefit of that and, you know, as we mm -hmm. talk to more and more people, as we've launched our course, we're just talking to people or doing mentor sessions or our own workshops. So many people come up to us and are like, I'm in my first year. I only have 14 weddings and I'm only charging $2,000. And it's like, what? You're so much further ahead than most yeah. people. And so just as a mm -hmm. reminder, if you're out there, you know, you show what you want to shoot. You have to be pushing to, to what you want to be and you know, if you set a destination in a route to get there, you know, you're more likely going to get there than with just mm -hmm. randomly trying to figure it out. And so some of these roadmaps, this type of education, whether it be courses or but learning from people, you know, podcasts like this, yes, but going and being in person at some of these workshops or um, doing one-on-one -on -one mentor sessions, we are going to be talking about that a lot on our podcast because we have seen people blow up their businesses mm -hmm. Instead of taking the long route, we want to help you get to the point in your business, in your shooting, in your editing, you know, by learning from people that have been there before. And so I yes. love what you're saying, Remy, especially about just copying others and like not being your, true to yourself. And there's just so much that goes into all that. And if you watch, you know, the films that you've produced, it's like that is definitely Maru Films. It's not, you know, my company or Nick's company. And so you want to stand out that way. So such great information. Yeah. Such great information. So, um, thank you for, for real, for being thank on. So I know it's like 10 o'clock yeah. at night where you're at right now. It's three in the afternoon while we're recording. And so it's appreciate okay. you being up, you know, till almost midnight for us. I know the listeners <laughs> appreciate it. Um, and are so, no they worries. were so excited to hear that you were going to be on, on the show. So thank you so much again. for being Yeah. Thank awesome. you so much. Well, thank you for, for having me. So oh, it, was, it, was, it was cool. I liked it. Well, Remy, thank you so much for joining us on the podcast this week. We really appreciate you taking the time. We would love for you to head over to howtofilmweddings.com. There you can buy some email templates that will help you in your business. You won't spend hours and hours emailing clients. You will be able to just with a few clicks of your mouse and some copy and paste or plug them into your CRM, you will be able to get back with clients quickly and efficiently and not waste your time. If you're listening to this on a podcatcher, please rate and review us. Subscribe to our channel on YouTube. And until next time, we will see ya. See ya.